I'm Abdullah Khanfour, and uh, today I'm going to present uh, my dissertation work or my PhD work. So my PhD work is uh, service discovery and mobile crowdsourcing recruitment in social Internet of Things. So first, I will uh, discuss the outline. I will start with some introduction and motivations of this work. Uh, then after that, I will move in the second part to graph analytics, the third part and applications of uh, the graph analytics in uh, Internet of Things. And finally, I will give the conclusions and some future work of this uh, PhD work. So first, I will start with the introduction and motivations. Uh, and the first thing, uh, the Internet of Things, um, it's a famous term actually in, in uh, computer science and software engineering, but uh, there is some important characteristics in Internet of Things. Uh, we should know that the Internet of Things is a vast scale network uh, that included a lot of devices and could reach uh, around 29 billion devices that will be connected to the Internet, uh, according to Ericsson, in just two years from now. Uh, also, there is another characteristic of IoT uh, network, which is heterogeneity. The heterogeneity meaning is the device ranging from simple sensors uh, such as uh, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, and so on, to a highly computational devices. And highly computational devices actually like smartphones, your personal computers. It's also a part of the uh, IoT ecosystem. And uh, one another thing is uh, the Internet of Things represent a real world network's characteristics, which meaning that it's not a random graph. Uh, there is some structure or typology of this network and that's why uh, the IoT systems uh, can be investigated using some graph analytics tool. In general, there is a lot of potential uh, and there's a lot of potential impact in different industry. As we can see in the figure uh, on the right side, there is uh, around 3.9 uh, 3 to $11 trillion per year uh, from 2025. So that's a big amount of money that will be invested in IoT systems. Also, another thing that the IoT systems, if we look at the figure below from 2010 to 2025, there is an increasing on number of devices and the increasing on number of devices also will increase the data generated uh, through these devices. So imagine if we have a temperature sensor, it will gonna generate some uh, data that uh, indicates, for example, the temperature and imagine that in a billions of devices. Uh, so basically, if we could see here, it's going to reach 175 uh, zettabytes, and zettabytes is uh, like it's a huge amount of data. So <clears throat> let's see what's the growth of the IoT concepts, like uh, how we reach the Internet of Things and how we reach the social Internet of Things that I'm going to discuss in this uh, work. So first, we started with the intranet of things uh, with the yellow circle in this figure and the internet, uh, intranet of things, which basically is the connection between things to things. And you could imagine that in a factory, like you have a multiple of sensors that are connected together and they can share some information with each other. Then we move to internet of things and internet of things, basically, uh, which we now we are uh, having now current days is the connection between human to human and things to things what i mean with the human to human if you could look at the social networks such as facebook twitter and so on uh, we have some type of relationships with each other and it's modeled through the internet but for the things and th to things we can see it in a larger scale like we can see some de devices in a, in a smart city uh, that are connected together so the social internet of things, uh, it's basically extending all these concepts to also human to things. What I mean to human to things, uh, for example, if you own a multiple devices, then you have a relationship with these things. And also not also it's for humans, it's also can extend it to organizations. So some organization can uh, own some multiple uh, things or devices, and we can connect uh, these, these devices to each other based on these relations. 
So what is social internet of things? The social internet of things is a concept to organize and manage the social relationships between the objects. And the objects is not only sensors and devices, the object could be also human. And the relationships between these objects can be from machine to machine, human to machine, and human to human. I think machine to machine relationship is so clear in, 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 the, in the devices of the IoT, like we can connect multiple devices together to work with each other. Human to machine is basically who own these devices. And human to human is basically the social relationship between the humans or the users of these IoT devices. So why we are using the social internet of things is basically every object in the IoT is seeking a desired service by using its relationships. And this helps us to query the friends and the friends of a friends in a distributed manner. It will, it will be clear uh, in the next slides uh, what I mean with these relationships. So basically, we have a multiple types of relationships that can be built between the IoT objects in a, in a social internet of things. The first relation is basically based on the co-location, co-work-based uh, co relations. So the idea is every device have a location in a smart city, and this location influences the structure of the network. So let me give you an example. For example, if we have a multiple sensors in the College of Computer Science in Najran University, and these devices are connected to each other in the same location. So if you go to the College of Computer Science every day, for example, and you have a smartphone, then your smartphone is connected to this um, location or this area. Uh, again, if there's another college, the same idea and so on. At your home, the same thing. You have a multiple devices at your home and they are connected to each other based on this co-location uh, based relation. The other relation, which is ownership relation, which is uh, clear. If you own a devices, then there is a relation between these devices. And to give you an example, if you have a smartphone, a laptop and so on, and you own these devices, then you can establish some relationship between these devices. And the social object relations, the social object relations is an idea or, or a concept that if there is a, a devices that expose to each other uh, for some period of time, then we can create a relation. Let me explain this. Uh, so basically, if we have two devices that are ex exchanging data for 30 minutes, for example, then we could say, since they exchange data between these two devices for 30 minutes, then we can say there is a relationship between these devices. And lastly, and this one relation actually we, we uh, proposed uh, in our, uh, or in my PhD work, which is social friendship and device ownership relation. The idea is if you have a friends and these friends have devices, you can access these devices based on your friendship. Uh, this friendship could be between people or users or could be between organizations. So if there's two organizations that collaborate with each other, they can access each other devices. So basically this is the idea of social friendship and device ownership. So what is service discovery? The service discovery is finding the suitable devices to perform a task in a vast network. So the idea here, if you have a vast network and you need some type of services, for example, you're asking about the weather, how you can find the most suitable uh, device in a vast network in a smart city, for example. And the service discovery concept actually is proposed in the World Wide Web or the internet but in the World Wide Web is basically based on the business logic, which mean if there is, for example, you have two websites, you can exchange data based on the business logic, or you could say like you have some business policies, but this service discovery, it cannot be applied on IoT uh, in the same way that is applied in the World Wide Web. Why? Because the 
the devices in the network, in the IoT network, it's heterogeneous. heterogeneous. And it's have different computing capability. It's have a different network bandwidth, battery capacity, and also the devices could change their places and so on. So we have multiple uh, criteria we have to consider for service discovery in IoT systems. Again, one of the motivations is there is a lack of service discovery architectures and protocols uh, in the IoT fields. And still, it's one of the thrust area to work on. So my research aim or my research goal is to provide a practical approach that can handle a vast network, for example, in a smart city, and identify different clusters of devices based on a criteria that ensure the trustworthiness and collaboration among the devices in the SIoT systems and also for mobile crowdsourcing tasks. So the challenges here, basically we having a large network with a lot of uh, connected devices. We need to reduce the search space so we can have efficient service discovery. And also we need to define explicitly and practically how the social relationships between these IoT devices. And also by doing all these, we need to consider the privacy issues and the trustworthiness issues in the IoT systems. So the objectives is service discovery of the suitable devices. And also uh, the application could be mobile crowdsourcing, edge computing, and so on that could benefit from the ideas from social internet of things. So basically what I did in my work, I have a, uh, a social internet of things or SIoT data set. And this data set is basically of a smart city from Santander in Spain. Uh, this city have a lot of IoT devices and we have the data of this city uh, which include around uh, 16,000 IoT devices. 14,000 of these devices or and more are private user devices, which I mean, what, what I mean with the private user devices is like smartphones, uh, laptops, and so on. And for public service devices, it's around 1,600 devices. And if you could see in the, in the map down uh, in this figure, uh, we could see there is a lot of type of devices that scattered in the city of Santander in Spain. So now we understand what is social internet of things. What I'm trying to do is service discovery through this vast network. How to do that is one of the great tools is graph analytics. And the graph analytics will uh, also, I will explain uh, the community detection methods and the graph analytics. So let me explain what is graph analytics and graph theory actually is one of the, the well-known fields in, in, in computer science and mathematics. So the graph is a mathematical representation of a complex networks, which basically we can represent the IoT network uh, into a graph. And the graph, as we know, it contains nodes and relationships or vertices and edges. So why we are using the graphs? The graphs is an analytical tool that is convenient, a statistical approach to analyze a complex systems. And here we have the social internet of things is a complex system actually. So let me give you an example here. If you look at this figure, uh, we have this graph of devices, for example, and they have some connection with each other. And we could apply some graph analysis, analysis algorithms and we can extract more information. Uh, actually the graph analysis algorithms, one of the famous algorithms is PageRank and PageRank is proposed by Google uh, founders. And they have been used that PageRank algorithm in their uh, Google search. Of course they updated, but this is the foundation of Google. Uh, but anyway, what is the community detection in graph theory? So the community detection in graph theory is basically to extract relevant groups of nodes and label them as a community. The concept of community actually is very old, which is like 1962 by Simon. Um, and there are different applications of, of uh, community detection. One of them is to understand a complex system. 
So by reducing and finding communities in this complex systems, we can understand it more. Also, it helps in visualizing the clustering of the nodes in the, in the graph. And also it's used to improve the information retrieval. So in our case, the information retrieval meaning is service and device discovery. So the promise of community detection is to having a deeper understanding and reveal structural patterns within a network structure. Let me give you an example, a basic example. So this figure uh, shows the co-authors in a different topics. Uh, some of them are in biology, some of them are in math, some of them in computer science and so on. So we can see there is a clusters of authors that work together. And also they can work in a different topics, but we can see some clusters in this figure. And it, basically these cluster representing their field of work, which is physics, math, computer science, and so on. One of the first uh, algorithms that have been uh, proposed to find this community is Newman and Graven in 2004. So there's a different types of community detection algorithms. I'm not, I'm not gonna go through them uh, in details, but uh, I will just show the types. We have hierarchical clustering. We have modularity maximization, which I'm focusing on using in my PhD work, which is called the Vaughan method. Uh, we have a click-based method, and we have minimum cut method. I, I can uh, explain it further if someone uh, need to, to explain it to him. But basically, there is two different main types of community addiction. If we can see this example uh, of this figure, we can see there is a cluster of nodes here, cluster of nodes here, and we can label each of them as a community. Uh, this type of community addiction is called disjoint because we have a different types of communities that are not overlapping. We have the other type of community addiction algorithms that can find overlapping uh, communities. As we can see, this green node is belonging to two communities, which is community one and community two. So the first paper I did is basically extract the IoT devices information uh, from a historical data set, which is a Santander uh, uh, city. Then after that, I apply the different relationships, the collocation, the ownership, and so on. And I find uh, multiple type of graphs. Then after that, I apply different type of community detection algorithms, which give us a different communities. And I applied at different types of community detection algorithms, as I said, Levon, Fronker Porch, and Oslom algorithms. So this is one of the figures to show like how many communities I got from the, the data set. And we can see for each different type of relationship, which is a graph, uh, we have different types of communities. And we can see from the different colors in each bar, it's representing a different type of devices in this uh, smart city. For example, we have smartphones, we have smart fitness and so on. And we can see like how many uh, different communities we have by applying different relationship and different algorithm. Uh, the next part I'm talking about the graph neural, neural networks. And the graph neural networks actually is one of the new fields. It's like currently getting more momentum. And the graph neural networks, we have nodes defined by their features and their neighborhoods and connection levels. The GNN allows a barrier knowledge about the graph with a certain confidence level before utilizing them for a certain applications. So we have a different GNN methods uh, output. We have node classification, we have link prediction and we have graph classification. Also, I'll not go through a lot of details about the graph neural networks. Uh, you could see there is a lot of publication currently uh, in this work. It's like uh, after the deep learning, we have this graph neural networks. So I applied the graph neural networks in, 
in my work. So first, as I said, I have a historical data set. I applied the different relationships uh, between the devices to, so, so I have a different graphs. I have also a device features such as the type, the brand, the model of the devices, the mobility and the battery capacity. After that, I applied some features encoding, so it can be suitable for the graph neural networks. Uh, some of these features such as device type, device brand is a categorical data. So I need to, uh, to make it as a node feature vector to be applicable in the graph neural networks algorithm. Then we apply the graph neural networks algorithm. After that, we apply a clustering machine learning algorithm. So the classic clustering machine learning algorithm such as k-means. And we get a different clusters of devices uh, or communities. Uh, also, this is uh, another work in progress. Uh, what, we did, what we did is uh, comparing the Vaughan algorithm, the, which is a traditional community detection algorithm, and another way of, G, of graph neural networks embedding. We assign different weights for each GNN embedding. And the embedding basically, if we say W is equal to zero, then we didn't include the features at all. And 0 0.5, we include some of the features and if we include all the features. And we could see that the number of communities is different. Um, also the modularity, we can see it's a little bit different, but why are we getting less uh, modularity score? Actually, the modularity score, the higher is better, but in this case, we, as we see, we, if we embed the features of the devices to find clusters, it's become less modularity score. And because of we adding more features and more data and it's not captured by the modularity score. Uh, again, this is some of the results we got, like we can see a different clusters. It's so clear that these are different clusters of devices. And if we go on with embedding the features, we can see some uh, overlapping between the clusters. And that's why we're getting less modularity score. Uh, <clears throat> so in summary, we apply different community detection algorithms in the social internet of things. Also, we study the application of uh, graph neural network on the IoT devices. And we represent it in numerical vectors to be suitable for GNN. And also in the GNN, the edges in the SIT social relation graph and the attributes of the, of the devices are embedded to the machine learner. We applied also a, conv a conventional machine learning cluster algorithm such as k-means and db-scan. We compared also the traditional community detection algorithms with GNN-based uh, approach. Uh, for sure, we know that GNN pro uh, process allows a fast conversion of a complex IoT systems into a structured group. So this is one of the advantage why using the GNN process. So after I show uh, what is the concepts of social IoT, what is graph analytics, let me show you the, the applications that we did and publish it as a different papers in this uh, dissertation. So the first application is uh, the natural language processing. So what we did is basically we have a text request written in the natural language. So imagine you have a system that you said, uh, how was the weather in the downtown area? So this paper or this system we proposed uh, can basically use NLP pipeline to remove unnecessary information and also highlight the necessary information that we need. Uh, then assign the suitable IoT device to answer this question. So this, this is the framework. It looks a little bit overwhelming, but the idea is simple. Uh, we did first uh, the clustering or the community detection phase, which I explained before in the previous part. Uh, so we have network uh, or a network of devices, we find communities. Then the second part, which we uh, used in this paper, is we have a requester input. And the requester input, for example, how is the weather in some location, we applied the NLP pipeline, we got 
the most important information, for example, the weather and the location. So the weather, we know that if he mentions some weather, um, some weather uh, text on the request, then we know that he needs, uh, uh, for example, a weather sensor and so on. We generate some similar word to make sure that uh, it's uh, related to weather. Uh, and also we match the location based on the request uh, location that he's, he, he, he input. And we could uh, apply this to compute computing application. We could apply it to weather application. We could apply it also to transportation applications. So here is a clear example. This is how the actually the, the system is working. So we ask the requester to input in a natural language or English to find the suitable devices to process. So for example, how was the weather in downtown? Basically, we clean the words. So we remove unnecessary words, uh, such as how and is, the, and it doesn't add any additional information. So we end up with weather downtown as we can see, weather and downtown. And then we generate the similar word to weather and also the similar word to downtown. And we can see there is some similar word to weather such as conditions, upwind, brave out, um, atmospheric condition, and so on. Where the downtown similar word could be, for example, um, the business district and so on. And then after applying the process in the a framework that we proposed, we can see that this the type of application needed for this type of request is weather, which is 1.0, uh, and less uh, similar to the transportation, which is almost uh, 0 0.4, uh, and so on for computation. So we selected the highest uh, similar application type. And we have the, the requester location, and we say this the type of this request is weather. So in summary, in this part, we propose an automated framework to handle a mobile crowdsourcing request uh, within a large uh, scale social internet of things. We use an NLP approach to clean the text. We match it with the suitable communities to get a small set of devices and to select one of the most suitable device. And this is helpful in crowdsourcing process, actually. The second application is to have a trustworthy recruitment process. And for the trustworthy recruitment process, uh, uh, as we know, we have a crowdsourcing, the practice of obtaining information or input into a task or a project by enlisting the service of a large number of people, either paid or unpaid. This is the basic uh, definition of crowdsourcing, but mobile crowdsourcing here is the act of outsourcing tasks performed by voluntarily or paid large pool of workers in an open call form format. So there is a different type of mobile crowdsourcing. I'm not going to go through it, but um, the idea here is uh, in this framework, again, we have two main parts. The first part is uh, to select a small area and to build the relationships between the devices based also in a social network between the, uh, the, the friends of the owners of these devices. Then we find the communities here. Then we combine the two relationships. Uh, then we list the devices that are suitable using a crowdsourcing selection method using ELP, then we recommend a set of devices or workers. So we have two phases in this uh, work. We have filtering phase and we have selecting phase. And this is the plot of the IoT devices. Actually, each dot in this uh, figure is showing an IoT devices. So we selected a small area to demonstrate our, our work. And this is the network between the devices and the different communities. Again, we apply ELP uh, to find the most suitable devices. So I will not go through this uh, in details, but basically the idea here is to maximize the skills and the ownership 
and minimize the cost. What what does I mean by skills, ownership, and cost in 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 uh, IoT devices? The skills is basically the capabilities of the devices. So the capability of the devices, for example, the battery capacity, the processing capacity, and so on. The ownership is clear. The ownership, if uh, the ownership of these devices. Um, and to minimize the cost, also the cost of processing this data and also how much it's needed to, to conduct this task. Um, so in summary, in this paper, uh, the overall efficiency of selected workers using uh, our approach, we call it CDL, which is Community Addiction Integer Linear Programming Algorithm, increased with a square root growth, unlike the average running time, which is increases increase exponentially. So basically we find here uh, almost in 0 0.4, 0 0.5, uh, that the running time it doesn't decrease a lot and the efficiency level, it's actually the like it's reached the maximum here comparing from 0 0.01. Um, and after that, it doesn't increase a lot. So we recommend uh, this radius uh, to select the suitable workers. The last application I did in this PhD work is computational resource allocation for edge computing. So the edge computing is a distributed computing paradigm that aims the computational task away from data centers uh, towards the edges, to, to the edges of the network. So we don't want to rely in a centralized uh, data centers. This help in the response time and transfer rates. Uh, and also bringing the available distributed uh, devices closer to the resources. So how to search in this vast network or the IT network to find suitable devices. So again, what we did is we have two parts. The first part is using community addiction, which is the trustworthy community addiction phase. And the second part, we apply a matching uh, device phase. We used uh, machine learning techniques to predict the time needed by an edge computer to accomplish a given task based on a historical computational sharing activities of the IoT devices. Um, the requester device attributes, we have the location, we have the type of the device, uh, PC, personal computers, vehicles, smartwatch, and so on. And the number of instructions within the task, how many instructions that need to be processed, and the size of the task's message. For the edge computers, computers attributes, we have a different attributes, such as the, uh, the speed and the RAM capacity and so on, the location of the device and the mobility. And in the matching device phase, we compare the performance of the three proposed machine learners, which is gradient boosting, random forest, and decision trees. And we find that gradient boosting is the, the performing the best comparing to other methods. So in summary, by combining community addiction and machine learning algorithms in a social internet of things, we can provide a practical service, uh, service discovery approach and assign a computational resource in each computing domain. And the proposed approach enable a requester to select a trustworthy edge computers among the available potential IoT devices. So from all this, as we can discuss before, uh, we discussed what is social internet of things, how we apply graph analytics, and how to find communities, and the different applications that we use from the community addiction algorithms to NLP, to recruitment process, to edge computing. Um, so basically I can conclude that the social IoT or SIoT establish a social relationship between different devices based on ge uh, geographical locations, ownership and so on. Uh, we have developed NLP based automated framework for a large scale uh, SIoT networks. Also, we used community addiction to simplify the special mobile crowdsourcing recruitment process. And we used uh, an ELP or integer linear programming was applied to select a community to optimize the most appropriate group of workers. 
We also have developed an automated service discovery technique for edge computing processes to find the IoT devices that having the sufficient computational capabilities. We use the graph analytics uh, tools and the different applications that we show. And uh, we reduce the complexity of the IoT system by using uh, community detection and also graph neural networks algorithms. It is very important, uh, and this is actually as a future or potential work, it's very important to have an efficient and effective clustering method. The problem that clustering methods are slow if we apply it to a large scale network in a smart city or IoT system. So we need to have a, a really effective uh, clustering method. The SIoT concept can act as a lunch bag. So the idea is to use the social internet of things uh, concepts as a lunch bag for different smart city applications. And we demonstrated that in this research. Uh, thank you so much. I hope this is clear. It's there is a lot of work, but uh, if you have any questions, I could uh, answer it. Um, thank you so much again for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, Mashallah, Tabarakallah. Uh, thank you for this informative uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, let's now uh, have the time for uh, any question. If you have any question or anything you can uh, uh, ask uh, Dr. Abdullah. Yes, Dr. Asad, you can open the mic and start. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah, for your nice work. I know it is uh, very difficult to uh, explain your PhD work in 40 minutes, but uh, Jazakallah Khair Thank you. for your uh, fantastic presentation. I just want to ask that when you found uh, some substitute words, for example, how's the weather in downtown, and yes. you are finding some alternative words in the uh, second part. So what yes. kind of technique you have used to find out these alternative words or the substitute words? Okay, that's a great question. Actually, what I did is, um, is basically build a, a keywords uh, dictionary that have the similar word to the to the weather. So basically, for example, uh, for weather, I have adding all these type of similar words in a one dictionary, and I match the similarity of the selected uh, word and to see if it's matching one of these dictionaries. For example, in transportation, I add, for example, taxi, uh, Uber, and so on. Like there's a lot of list of words car uh, moving and so on so is it uh, so, is it your is it your own data sets is that right yes yes so for these keywords i i did it by myself i generated a, a long list of keywords and trying to match the similarity between them is that clear yeah thank you so much thank you okay. thank you So I have a question, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Thank you so much for the nice presentation. Thank you so um, much. It was really presented in a very beautiful way and very clear. So okay. my question is um, about the text analysis. Yes. I'm more interested in the NLP part, uh, which is uh, how, how could we uh, get benefit of IoT with the relation with, uh, with the text analysis? I see that you are talking about social aspect, you're talking about communities. For example, if I'm using Twitter or Facebook, or, I know it's, it's, it could be tricky for the privacy issue, but how could we really get the benefit of the text analysis in terms of the social aspect? Uh, for example, if, if I don't want only to think about the weather or something very general, I want to talk about real similar communities. Mm real, uh, real uh, social similarities between these communities. Is there any way that uh, we could think of something like this or to implement it? Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I think I understand the question, but let me say it again. So basically in Twitter, you have people who write some type of, they write some tweets uh, that have some text and you're trying to find 
the similarity or the communities of these uh, people who write that type of text? Is that what I understand? Yes, that correct? And, uh, yes, that's correct. And based on the IoT techniques that you were talking about, so how yeah, can we combine between them and, and see if there is anything we could we could understand or could we we could get out on this because we know we always when we think about Twitter or text analysis in Twitter, for example, we only oh. mainly uh, depend on the text only. But in this work, you were talking about the NLP and also the devices. Yes. So, so here's the idea. Um, so if you look at this framework, in this part, you could basically say, I have these peoples in a set of devices. And you could, like, for example, like uh, have the links between them based on the following. Like, let me give you a clear example. So if I'm following you and you follow me, then I create a link between each other. So, and so on. So you have a very big graph like this of the users and who follow each others. And you could apply community detection on it. And from that, you could use the, the text processing part and see uh, what type of communities uh, that basically tweet in that way. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, if there's some people that tweeting a lot about technology or about computer science, uh, you could build them in a one community. So, so the idea is basically how you build the graph from the beginning. Okay, this is the key component. Uh, if you know how to build these graphs, and after that, you could apply community detection, and you could explain why they are these different communities. As I explained before in my research, the communities or, or the, the graphs, they are based on three different criteria. For example, the location of the devices. If the, if the devices are close to each other physically, then we create a link between them. I hope this explained the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, very good illustration. Uh, I could think of another example in terms of the current issue with the COVID. Yes. Uh, people are using their mobile devices all the time. So if yes. I could create uh, a community based on those devices. Yes. And then they can uh, communicate with each other based on the text. And then we can uh, really ana analyze those texts. This could give us a, a better understanding of those community. I think this is really a nice idea and, and uh, your work is, is very great in this, uh, in this aspect. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for your uh, really uh, great feedback. Um, any more questions or? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, you can start. Okay, Dr. Abdullah, alaikum uh, First of all, I'd like to congratulate you for this achievement uh, and excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, and inshallah, we'll come you soon to the Kabaj Bidillah. So, so I just want to go back to the first work where you apply the uh, detection algorithms, chemical detection algorithms on the uh, Spanish data. Uh, I'm just curious. So for this cluster that you've got, so what, so if, let's say the, the relationship between clusters were homogeneous or heterogeneous, what made this uh, relationship uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous that you found in the cluster you got? Yes, uh, because I have defined uh, a different types of, of relationships and these relationships are heterogeneous. So for example, uh, sorry, it's not heterogeneous. It's, it's, uh, it's homogeneous. homogeneous. Yes, so mm -hmm. basically, uh, let me see. Yeah, these these the different type of relations that I proposed in the work. Right. Uh, based on the collocation. So the collocation, I don't I don't care here about the device type. I mm -hmm. I care more about their physical location in in the smart city. Uh, okay. And, and therefore, there is a, the relations between these devices is is homogeneous. Is the location, the ownership again the same thing. Uh, I'm caring about who own these devices uh, and I build this relationship and so on. 
So I have okay. a different graph for each different uh, relation. But in, in, okay. in the future, it could be extended to multiplex uh, graph analytics, which is a challenging area, actually. It's not uh, um, a straightforward application of, uh, of this type. Yeah. Right. I'm just um, so the, the, um, this is the second part. Of this is my question. I'm just just curious. I'm sure that throughout your work, you've came across this problem or even this thought. So let's say we want to do real time clustering. Yes. Uh, so now what we did, we did post you know, clustering. Right. So you get the data. I mean, we get what uh, from the, these devices and then we did it. So let's say we get to advance and this. OK, let's do it real time. So. Would it be possible? What's the implication? Can we do, do it? Do we need uh, high computation uh, capabilities? Yes. And in, in, this, in this application, what I did in my work, it's, it's require a high computational resources. Um, still, like the community addiction is relatively new, uh, new um, like scientific approach. It's not too old. It started like from the 60s or maybe the early 1920s. But uh, to have a, like a very good optimized uh, application of community addiction or clustering, uh, there is a lot of work need to be done. And actually, I started one paper, but uh, it took too much time. So uh, I think when I go back to Nizaran, we could uh, like sit on it and try to to work on some algorithm that uh, could be applicable to to uh, to a time series uh, analysis or time series graphs. Um, one of the thing is GNN. GNN is good because if you apply it once, after that the next step you just need to to um, because you train the model once and then you apply the train model in each time step. So that's what, in that way, you can reduce some of the computational process uh, comparing to the clustering or community addiction algorithms. Um, yeah, but thank you so much for your inputs. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. It's very interesting work. Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? So. Okay. Uh, Salam uh, yeah, Salam Allah. Salam. I have a question. Uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Hey, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Congratulations for your uh, good job. Thank you and, so much. Uh, thank you for your good uh, presentation. Very interesting. Thank I you. like this topic. I'm, I'm working around this area, so I'm interested in the, in uh, you're matching community when you establish community. Uh, for example, in uh, textual language, you eliminate first step, uh, you eliminate an important word. The next uh, step, you uh, create uh, uh, another definition for uh, uh, certain words, like whether you choose another uh, synonym for that word. Yes. So the criteria here, uh, if you don't mind to, uh, um just repeat it here yes um yes how how do you generate this uh, community uh, by which uh, criteria like what uh, is it uh, ontology could help here or uh, so can you just explain it yes I, I, i'm in my application um uh, i just applied a simple nlp approach i didn't go through a lot of um, like a lot of details. My main concern is the community addiction part, which is this part, uh, the community addiction and how to create relationships between the devices. And this is actually my main contribution in this dissertation. But anyway, uh, to explain what you say, uh, I have also in the textual request is the location, okay? And as you know, one of the relationships between the devices, as I explained before, is based on the location of the devices. So if the devices are located close to each other, uh, then we can say um, there is a relationship between them. And again, like in my data set, I have the devices, uh, as you see here, is scattered in a, in a, in a real city, uh, Santander in Spain. Yes. So I could say like 
these could perform some small community here. And the requester asked uh, the weather in downtown. So I have all these devices in this cluster uh, that will be selected and search on it instead of searching in the whole city. That's the idea. Yes. Uh, I hope this is uh, explained clearly what I did. Uh, for the, the, the words, as I said before, the keywords, I generated like all the three applications. So I tested in all the three applications, which is uh, computing applications. So basically I said, if he asked for, instead of weather, he asked for processing, uh, storage, RAM, the related computing words. Uh, so I said, okay, I can identify its computing. If he asked for transportation, then uh, for taxi moving and so on, uh, I can match it to, to suitable uh, devices, IoT devices. I can extend this type of application to many different types, but I just show three types here in this paper. Yes. Uh, is that clear? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, no problem, thank you. Thank you for your question. Yes, any more question uh, for Dr. Abdullah? Uh, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Smith. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Abdullah, on your, uh, your PhD. I have just uh, one question about the GNN. Yes. Uh, how, how big is the model? And is it uh, like can be fit in, like, in, uh, can be run in a mobile device? Uh, for run, like for uh, on time or real time uh, detection of oh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, actually the GNN methods are usually uh, computational heavy so yeah I, I know your your concern that uh, I think one of the new new topics is using the the machine learning in edge computing um, but I didn't highlight a lot in this problem. So in my, in my work is basically, uh, I, I think about it as a centralized way. So I have a city and this city have, uh, for example, uh, let me see, uh, it's have a, like a centralized uh, cloud uh, that will do the processes. Uh, I didn't do that for the edges, uh, to do the processes and the edges. So let me give you an example. Uh, if someone um, asks for uh, weather from a, an edge, then it will go through the, the cloud itself. Um, but yeah, I understand your question is that, uh, is GNN suitable for mobile uh, machine learning, something like that, or uh, a small scale computing resources? I'm not sure, but so far, what I read from the GNN algorithms, they are computationally heavy. Uh, they are not uh, very lightweight to process it in a, in a smartphone. Yeah, so how, how big is the model? How many layers in that and how many parameters in the, in the GNN? Uh, the GNN, uh, we, we uh, actually, we play with the parameters a lot, uh, but the idea of GNN is to, to um, have a numerical vectors of the devices, a numerical representation, and we feed it. And um, I think we have like two layers or three layers. Oh, uh, okay. It's not a lot, uh, but um, yeah, there's, so yeah, please. You, ha you, have, you have the numerical re representation of the devices and yes. then you feed through the neural network and yes. what will what is the label at the end? So what's the target? The target is to have um, a different communities or uh, a different, uh, let's say like, uh, and actually this work is work in progress. I haven't finished it I yet see. to be honest, uh, okay. but um, let me show you, uh, where's the table that I have? I totally, uh, Okay, so here in this table, sorry, we have uh, 
like how many communities we needed, how many labels for, for each device. So it's like a clustering uh, method. We use the DNN. And um, for Livon, like for example, we have six. Uh, for node uh, embeddings uh, with weight zero, we have eight and so on. Uh, so this is the target is to have a multiple devices that have uh, the same labels. I hope this has explained the idea of using DNN in our in in, in my uh, work. Uh, yeah, so it's still unclear for me. But uh, so let me give you an example. So suppose you have like a, a housing data set, okay, and okay. you want to see like classify uh, like like the housing either they are high like uh, luxury houses or like. Uh, uh, normal ones, you have two classes. So this is kind of a classification task. Yes. So I'm wondering if your case is classification or just just like creating embedding space so you can cluster it. Because I, I see that you have, after reward, you have the uh, key mean clustering. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I understand you now. Now it's clear. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm trying to have the, the, the embedding space then after that using uh, okay. A traditional okay. clustering algorithm. Okay. Um, okay. So it's it's clear for me. Yeah, I, I I I might like sit down with you and trying to actually work on it because I started that in my late late uh, PhD work to be honest, and uh, but yeah, um, okay, yeah no we problem. can we can sit down together and of course discuss it in more detail. All right. Congrats again and thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Abdullah, just uh, if we could uh, have citation for this, because I'm uh, indeed I'm, I'm get benefit from this uh, for my current uh, research. So I need to cite this uh, as my reference. One. Sure, uh, I can. Um, let me. I see. looked now for uh, Google Scholar, but maybe I'm, I'm misspelling your name, so I couldn't find them. Okay. Uh, um. This is my name. I, I don't know if you can find it in Google Scholar, or I could share it with you in the chat. Yeah, just the reference of this work, just to add it for my name. Okay, okay. Um, because, yes, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't get your name, so if you can help me to... Ahmed, Ahmed al Masala. Ahmed, 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 hayak Allah. Uh, okay, I, I will send it to you through the chat. Yeah. You can, uh, you can just send him uh, an email. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, if you can put your email on the screen so everyone can see it. And uh, if you have any question, you can just uh, send an email to uh, Dr. Abdullah and uh, inshallah, he will uh, contact you as soon as possible. And inshallah, when he join us, he will uh, inshallah contribute to uh, all the members and uh, all the colleagues inshallah in the college. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah, uh, for this informative uh, presentation and for this great work, mashallah. And uh, inshallah, we will see you uh, very soon, inshallah, in the college and join us and uh, inshallah, uh, we'll uh, collaborate in uh, many areas of uh, this uh, great research. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. I would like also to thank uh, or uh, if you want to co uh, coordinate to uh, make this uh, happen, uh, Dr. Yusuf, Dr. Sultan, uh, for arranging and uh, or organizing uh, this uh, presentation. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, and have a great night. Shukran, shukran,